Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. You know what's happened to you at least once in your life where you accidentally double-clicked on something instead of just clicking on it. And, you know, you, you double-click on a button that you should have just clicked on once, and now it happens twice, like printing a long report, right? So in today's video, we're going to talk about preventing accidental clicks and double-clicks in your Microsoft Access forms. Today's question comes from Felix in Peoria, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Felix asks, how can I prevent a user from accidentally double-clicking your button that should only be clicked once, such as a print report button? I want to ensure that the action stops after the first click. I've got a lot of users, myself included, who accidentally double-click on buttons and send down two copies of a 13-page report. Happens a lot. Yeah, this has happened to me a couple times too. I used to have this uh, end of month report that I'd run in my own database and it involved, you know, uh, action queries like an app pen query and some other stuff importing. And once in a while I would accidentally double click on it and it's like a two minute process. And so I'd be like, Argh. all right, so how do we prevent that from happening? First up, some prerequisites. This is a developer level class. So you're gonna need to know a little bit of VBA. So if you've never done any VBA programming before and you want to learn how, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long and it will teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA and Access. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you'd like to. You'll find links down below. And in here, I've got a little button. It just says hello world and it puts hello world in the little status box there. That's all that guy does. But let's reprogram this button and we're going to pretend that this button launches some long event, like printing a big document or running a big append query or an import or something like that. Now, I'm just going to simulate that event by using a sleep timer. I'm gonna make the system just sleep for one second, and that will be enough for us to see that multiple clicks are happening. Now, if you downloaded a recent copy of this in the global module here, you will find a copy of my sleep function. It's right here, sleep sec and we declare it right there. That's where we get the sleep function from. I got a whole separate video that explains this thing and how it works. You'll find a link to this video down below. All right, so let's reprogram this button so it does something. And just so we can see how many times the button click actually registered, let's turn this box into a counter. So we can see every time that the event runs, we'll just increment the counter one, right? So let's just rename this here, counter, right? The box itself, let's go to all. I'm gonna rename the box to counter. Let's get rid of the control source and get rid of the format. And I'll set the default value to one. So when the form opens up, that'll have the value one in it. Okay, now the button itself, I'm just gonna put on here print or whatever. We can leave it hello world button, that's fine, that doesn't matter. Okay, save that. Now let's go into the button, build event. And instead of status hello world, I'm going to say counter equals counter plus one. We're just gonna increment that counter variable. That's all that's going to do, right? So come back out here, close it, open it back up again, click the button, it goes to two. Click it again, it goes to three. Now, you've all seen this before. If you haven't done it yourself, I'm sure you know someone who has. I used to teach Windows basis classes in the classroom. And all the time I would tell people, no, just click on the icon and they would double click. And you, you, can't, you can't fault them, right? If you're new to computers, and I used to teach a lot of newbies, it takes a while to get the concept of a double click. And even if you're an advanced computer user like myself, I accidentally double click on stuff. I just did it this morning. Um, so what we want to do is we want to intercept that second click and stop it from happening. And the only way we can really do that is to make the button know if it's currently being used. Right? We're going to set a variable and say, hey, hold on, I'm in use right now. I, I'm unavailable. So if a click happens, just ignore it. Okay? Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simulate a long process happening. So what I'm going to do is use a sleep in here. I'm going to say sleep 1000. Those are milliseconds. So it's going to sleep one second between clicks. And that'll give us the opportunity to see that what's going on there. All right, save that. Come back out here. Now, if I click, you'll see there's a delay, and then it goes to two. Click again, a delay, and it goes to three. Even if I double click, watch this, click, click, four, five. It's still getting that next click, right? One, two, three. I just click three times, six, seven, eight. So we have to intercept that somehow, all right? And the way to do that is back in the code, we're going to set a variable 
that is going to know that this particular button has just been clicked. It's processing something that's already started. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could use a form field, we could use a global variable, we could use any number of different ways to do this. I'm gonna use a temp bar because I love temp bars. And if you don't know what temp bars are, talk to Adam. <laughs> now temp bars are basically just system memory variables that have a lot of benefits to them. I like to use them a lot. Go watch this video if you wanna learn more about them. So right here, I'm going to say temp vars is processing equals true. Okay. And then when the event is done running, I'm going to say it equals false. Okay. Are you with me so far? Now, when we first come into this, I'm going to say if temp vars is processing equals true, then exit sub. In other words, when you first come in here, if this is true, just leave. Don't do anything. Okay? Now, we should initialize this temp bars somewhere. Normally, temp bars uh, for Boolean types will be initialized to false. Um, long integers uh, default to zero. Uh, strings default to an empty string. But I don't like relying on that. So I'm going to initialize this to false when the form loads. All right, so I'm going to find the form load event and when the form loads we're going to set it to false in other words it's not processing when the form first loads and we've made sure that the value is set to false okay now why can't we just use a regular variable in here well it has to be at least a form level variable we could declare a variable out here that that would work or you could use something called a static variable there's all kinds of different options i like temp bars and yes i've got videos for global variables and static variables and all that different stuff you'll find them on my website if you want to learn more all right, so let's save our work. Let's give it a debug compile. Always good, good to do once in a while. Debug compile, make sure there's no syntax errors. Come back out here, hit the button again. Okay, I got a nine. Let's double click it. Click, click. 10, uh, 11. Okay, all right, wait, all right. Hang on. Click, click. 12. 13. Okay, so what's happening? It's still it's still registering twice. What what, what happening? It's, it's not checking to see if it's equal to true and exiting sub. Well, the problem is, is that while the code is running okay it can't stop to check anything else until the code is done executing so what happens is it runs this it runs this it goes through this it does this sets it equal to false and as soon as it exit backs out again your second click processes right and it starts the process all over again so we need some way in here to interrupt that we need some way to say okay when you're done sleeping all right but before you set this to false, I need you to go out and check to see if any other events want to run, right? Go out and check to see if, you know, some other form wants to do something or if uh, the user happened to click, right? These are all things that we can check for with do events. Do events says, I'm going to hold on for a second. You do whatever else you got to do. And then I'll finish doing what I was doing. What will happen is do events frees up the system for your second click to start processing. Once that second click processes, it's gonna come in here and say, are you busy? Oh yeah, you're busy, because we haven't set it to false yet, see? So it comes back in here, says you're busy, exits out and doesn't process that click. Make sense, you following me? Do events is like going, all right, uh, you, what, what do you wanna do? Okay, and then it goes and does it. All right, so save that. Now if I come out here and I go, click, click, I only get one. Here, let's set this back to one so we can see it's easier, right? All right, so that's one. I'm gonna go click, click, I just double clicked. It goes to two and it stops, why? Because as soon as it got to this spot here, it freed up the cycle so that the, the processor could go and run any other events that wanted to run, all right? It grabbed that second click out of the buffer Reran this module, a second copy of the module basically ran, right? That's what do events kind of does. And it, the first thing it processed was this, and it says, are you processing? Yeah, the other module, the other copy of the module was processing. So it exited out of the second click. Then it comes back to the first click. Now it can free up and say, I'm done processing. See how that works? It's tricky. It's all about learning how these processes run. Another thing you could also do if you want the user to visually see that, um, that, that they can't click a second time 
is what you could do is like right here after the counter, you could say, uh, the make the button disabled. So say, hello world button dot enabled equals false. That will make it grayed out. Okay. And then um, I would throw another do events here. So it updates the screen. Okay. So your counter will increment. The button will get disabled. The user will see that. The process will run. Do events will run again and free everything up and clear that variable and then it will exit out. And if you want to re-enable the button after that, you can, or you can just leave it disabled. If you want to make it so that you got like a big report and you don't want the user printing it a second time, you could force them to have to exit the form and then come back in so the button's enabled again. That's up to you. Or make a second button to unlock it, whatever. I think this works just fine. So save this. Come back out here. I'm going to close it and reopen it just to make sure everything's cleared. All right, ready? I'm going to double click now. Double click. See? It disabled the button, which you could visibly see, and it didn't run my second click. Let's do it again. I'm going to click three times. Click, click, click. See? It disabled the button, and it only processed one of those. All right, I turned mouse click effects on in my software. Let's see. Click. <laughs> All right, I'm going to double click now. See? It only clicked once. I'm going to click three times. And it only did one, see? Right, I'm going to turn that off. I personally find those mouse click effects annoying. I don't know. What do you think about those? Um, when I watch other tutorials and people have these, you know, mouse halos on and the click events, and I, I, I find that distracting myself. I don't know. What Do you like that? What do you think? Uh, post in the comments down below and let me know what you think. All right. I turned it all back off. That's how I like to do it. All right. All right. So there you go. That's how you disable the button, clear that event, and you only get one click out of that button no matter how many times the person clicks on it, unless unless they happen to click before, you know, before, if they if they click while the process is just finishing, they might get that second click. You could add an additional sleep timer in here. So even after, let's say this is your print event, right? You could add another second or two second pause down here before you set that temp bar to false. And that will give them a buffer, maybe put, put like a five second pause in there, I don't care. That way, you know, in case they do click longer or multiple times, it'll still eat up that time. Up to you. All right. I give you the Legos. You can play with them. Build however you want. Do you like this stuff? Do you like learning with me? I got lots and lots of lessons on my website, folks. Tons and tons of them. Um, hundreds of hours of videos. And they're all arranged in a nice orderly fashion. You know, level one, level two, level three, in the order that you should learn them. Okay. So check them out. You'll find a link down below. And um, yeah. Cool stuff. And we have a lot of fun. So that's going to do it, folks. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video.
Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.